Welcome to the podcast for the sisters and bros. It will make you laugh from your head to your toes. Talking about their lives, from the highs to the lows. And the name of the title goes... The Sloppy Joes. Welcome everybody to the yes! Sloppy Joes podcast! <laughs> it's another episode with me, Joe McGrath! And me, Joe Smith, how you doing? I'm very good, mate. Full of energy today. Full of mustard, as you might you, say. You love a mustard top. I you love do. it. I do. Also in the corner, it's one, Ethan J. Hello, Joe. Sir Ethan, how are you? Hello, yes, very well. Got some tales to tell, I'm sure. Uh, he doesn't know, does he? <laughs> he does. says, I'm sure, like, he's going to come up with them now. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. should already know I'm them. Sure. Why don't you have a thing Some before? tales to, to tell, I'm sure. Let's see if, you know, the person that's brain I use comes up with any. That is you that you're talking about. Some yeah. tales to tell, I'm sure. You're talking about yourself. So whether you know if you've got them or not, you okay? it's only up to you. <laughs> this is one of Joe Smith's massive sentences. Yeah, big Sometimes tirades. you do a big sentence. Yeah, Joe's big sentence. Joe's it's big sentence. Feature. Is it coming yeah, up, yeah, later, yeah, on yeah, yeah, up later on in the show? Uh, last week, we had the wonderful Steve Tri on a yeah. uh, great great episode I could watch that back mm-hmm. although everyone's feeling a bit for, for me I was I was thinking about this I, right I was a bit like I'd just been filming all day and have you seen The Dark Knight Rises yeah do you know when Batman first goes to see Bane mm. and he gets the shit kicked out of him yeah that I was, was very I much was born in the darkness moulded by that it. was very much me with you and Steve last Tuesday last you didn't see the light until you were already a man Fuck, you brought me back yeah but now I've been in a hole for a week. What? I've climbed up. Sorry, no, Who's? it's in the film. Oh, I've climbed out. Sorry, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Here I am. Batman also, returns. Let's, here's the other thing. Let's not blame whatever that was on me and Stephen. No, no, no. You'd had three takeaways that yeah, day. Yeah, That's complacent. why you were a little bit sluggish. Yes, but in the film, Batman is out for seven years. That's why he's a little bit sluggish. Many comparisons between me and Batman, isn't there, Ethan? Oh, um, definitely in terms of uh, physique, bravery. Um, <laughs> Good manners. <laughs> Good manners. <laughs> Batman, known for his manners. They used to call him P and Q's man, but it, it didn't catch on because of being catch Q. on. Uh, I've got loads to talk about, but Ethan had tales to tell. How's your week, tales been, Ethan? to tell? I'm sure. Um, yeah, I, I had a nice week. Obviously, uh, the podcast with Stephen Traj the other day was our first dosage of uh, fame, and then I got to do produce a podcast with Danny Simpson on. Obviously, Newcastle legend because he finished fifth with us once, which is as good as Newcastle finished in the Premier League in about. Yeah. 23 years. Who'd you say is more famous, Stephen or Danny? Oh, probably Stephen, isn't he? So, so as Danny Simpson, like, you go, that Leicester side, you think of Vardy, Mares, Kante, you don't go, Danny Simpson. But I still like Danny yeah, Simpson. Yeah, yeah. He's still good. He's still, he's still, Was that he's, disrespectful? He's not even the most famous Danny in that squad, because Drinkwater's springing to ah, mind. Ah, yeah, well. yeah. He's not even the most sim- famous Simpson, is he? Homer. <laughs> Or Bart, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, what have yeah. you been up to then? What else have you been up to, Ethan? Leroy Simpson went to school with him. So um, famous what? for, uh, well, neglecting his kids, but don't worry about that. Ethan James. Um, what else have I been up to? Um, <laughs> well, well, obviously, well, today I went to go get my 9, and nine out of 10 glove, which we'll get into later on. Lovely. And when I was what having a tease. wander around the uh, Arndale, I, c- I might put this in because it was uh, quite entertaining. All these massive people in Halloween costumes storming around, playing the trumpets, playing the drums, all to uh, the Agony Band scene. Can you believe this? He showed me this. He said, can you believe that someone's been watching our podcast, Mm. seen our theme theme for Agony Bands, and has fucking stole it for their Halloween thing. He can't it's believe so it. so fucking <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh, this reminds me. What? I was thinking about, um, do you know our intro jingle at the start? Yeah. I was wondering if we've got any musicians watching who are coming to the live show <gasps> that could possibly bring that to life. A live version of it? A live version. Obviously, we'll have to get the uh, lady in that we paid good money for mm. uh, to do the, the vocals. But She's anyone, quite robotic, isn't she? She's bless yeah, but that's, how you, that's what you paid good money for. Mm. Uh, if anyone has got the instruments that can make the noise, I mean, what is it? Is it a guitar or is it a piano? Mm. 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 Or is it a bass? Mm. Mm. Like a bass. So I think it's a bass. Right. If any good bass players fancy getting down, getting involved... Getting down. Hopefully, you're one of the guys who've already got the tickets because we got no room. So, left. so here's what we're looking Essentially. for. Here. <laughs> we're looking for one in 
So there's only 100 tickets been sold. We are hoping that one of those people Can plays play bass place. well enough that they could and would be willing to play our theme tune live to bring us on stage. And if that almost impossible task doesn't happen and you haven't got a ticket, let us know and we'll get you in. But you have to play bass on stage. Oh, man, we are, it's going to be busy that day. It's going to be a busy day. Anyway. Uh, right, I've got a question job. for everyone. Uh, something we discussed this week on my radio show. Uh, and I think we all might have different answers. Um, bedding, right? How often are you washing the bed sheets, mm -hmm. Joe Smith? See, I've been, I've, this has been part of my world recently. Go on. Because I've been basically living at my girlfriend's sort of 90% of the time for the last 10 months. Yeah. Which means that my bedding at my flat... You've only been together six months, though. <laughs> <laughs> that she knows about. She <laughs> <laughs> I'm sneaking and I'm creeping and I'm under the floorboards <laughs> before that. I had my eye on her for a long time, what I'm telling you, okay? One day I went, bring my boyfriend! <laughs> and I meant, girlfriend, and she went, who are you? And I went, bye! <laughs> but luckily I was in disguise, she didn't know it was me. Four months later, we matched on Hinge. You love really, it. I logged into her account, added myself, <laughs> no. unlogged out, oopsie daisies, how are you doing, babes? <laughs> um, anyway. But if any of that wasn't true, when it was, yeah. then this is what would be happening. So for the last 10 months, I've basically been sleeping on my bed sheets once a week. <sighs> so I know where so, this is so going. here's the question Do you wash your sheets based on the days since the last wash or the sleeps in the bed since That's the last great wash? Question. What I'm trying to get to here, Joe, is I haven't washed my sheets in 10 months. <gasps> That's still a lot. That but what you've got to think is so how many weeks? So. How often oh, would you no, wash no. your sheets? Once a month? Once every two weeks? I think we go once every three. Okay, once every three weeks. So that yeah. is 21 sleeps. 21 days, yeah. Right? And in under uh, 10 months or thereabouts... I don't think your maths are going to help you out here, you know. 40 sleeps. Yes, 40 right. sleeps. So it's only twice as much as you've done. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell? Like, I, if, if it's only once every week, hey, Joe, can you tell? Joe, it smells like dead skin. Oh. It smells like dead skin in there. Do you know when you meet someone that's got eczema? Yeah. And they've just got a thing about oh. My sheets smell like eczema. Uh, what about your girlfriend routine? Does she wash her bed in law? <laughs> She's She is vociferous really? with washing. She, you can't stop mean? her washing it. She's like, strip the bed in. It's like, there's no bed in on it. Isn't stripping just the bed in a fucking ball ache? It could be the worst job in the world. Putting the this quilt back in the quilt yeah. cover might be the worst it's job in so the world. It's so bad. How is it so bad? I hate it. I, I, sometimes I go inside out and then I pretend you I'm a do. ghost. Ooh. Pro <laughs> Yeah, piles. Uh, more on that later. Uh, I don't have piles. Uh, sometimes, so, so you grab the corners and you go inside. Have you ever done that? And then you're a no. ghost for a minute. Do you so like to be a ghost? She, she uh, hands you the bedding, you oh. grab hold of it, fucking you flip. Need, you like need that. two people to yeah, change yeah, bedding. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, we go, we go all. What about you, Ethan? Bedding wise, how often are you changing? What's your routine? You're going to love this. So, um, I hate doing my bed and things. So, what, uh, what my mum got me as a present because she knew I didn't like it <gasps> was a duvet that you just simply put into the washing machine. So, there's no what? cover or anything. You just like literally put it in. You just put a duvet. So, in. so there's no, there's a, you don't need to do it. You don't need to put a cover in. You just, it's just all one, and you just whack it in the washing wow. machine and take it back out. And there's That's no incredible. hassle. That is we're, incredible. Like, like, we're smoking roll-ups. He's smoking straights. Yeah. This guy's yeah, on yeah. the Marlboro Lights. It comes He's ready made. Fuck. We're like putting it together, folding it, rolling it. He's Forget fuck. that. This guy, what? He's injecting. How long does it take to dry though? Because that's my that, worry. In that's the, my worry. In these winter months, you put a duvet in the, mm. in the washing machine. The, my boxes smell like mold at the best of times. Mine were wet today. That's what I'm They've saying. They've only just dried. Yeah, but that, they were dry when you put them on. No, no, no. Oh. Oh, they were wet. Oh, really? Sometimes wow. you just got it. In the winter months, you just got to wear wet, I'll wet wear boxes wet. today. Yeah. How long does it take for you to dry this washable quilt, Ethan? Doesn't take long at all. Just hang it up. Might take like an hour. An hour? Yeah. An hour? Yeah. Fuck off. You don't have to take for a sock to dry. Listen, nothing no, an no, hour no, no. to dry. Listen, listen. The, the, the material that it, that it uses, it, it's very light and it's not heavy and it dries very quickly. Light. Hang it up. So can I just say then, ask you a question, honestly, mm. are you sleeping underneath one of those blue tarpaulin sheets that people use as a ground sheet for camping. <laughs> Look, I think you might have seen it on Come Down With Me because it is a bit bizarre. I don't. I might put an oh, image in it. Oh, that thing that's like se separated into squares. It looks like it's like yes. a North Face puffer uh, jacket. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we mentioned the puffer jacket on, on the Come Down With Me. It's like a that's puffer jacket. Our patron. Okay, so what about your base sheet, your pillowcases, all that? Because you, they're not, 
you know, you got. You don't them. wash them. You do not, you? Or you just put the whole bed in the washing machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't wash the. I don't wash the bed sheet. Just pop the mattress in the washing machine. No, I, I do put the the, the the pillow because apparently pillowcases they can be quite disgusting, you know. So if you like, that's apparently the dirtiest thing. So do you only get like bad skin and that? Well, yeah. apparently a big reason for it is not cleaning your pillowcases. Really? Okay. Yeah. So to answer my question, how often are you washing yeah. them? Um, I would say every month. Yeah, a month. See, a that's month 31 sort of days. I've only, I've only no, had 40 no, sleeps on mine. No, different, Different, because sometimes you do sleep more than once a week there. As soon as you add that in twice a week, now you're on 80 days. Mm -hmm. Soon doubles, done it? It soon, soon doubles. It soon does double. But even up to this week. Uh, Travelling the shopping centres of the United Kingdom. Genuinely, the Bristol's. some of the most... Most Alan Partridge content of all time. It travelling, was. travelling <laughs> the UK by its greatest shopping centres. Where have you been? Bur Bristol, what a place. Birmingham and Leeds. Oh, it's sort of got worse mm. as the as the. <laughs> You've slagged off Birmingham on this podcast too many times. No, yeah. well, Birmingham's all right. It's nice in the middle for me now. Bristol, what a place. Lovely place. Lovely people. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to Sandwich Sandwich. This incredible sandwich shop. What do they sell? Uh, sandwiches, oh. but also really hot, um, really hot scotch eggs. I'll, I'll tell you what, the best compliment you can give a scotch egg is it, it is really hot. Yeah, because I've got a fresh one. And then, so check this out, sandwich sandwich went, coming for breakfast, I had some breakfast, it was beautiful. It was like a flatbread with bacon and sausage in. To die for. <laughs> it will to be. die for. I'm there, nearly there, <laughs> halfway. Uh, and then, as I was sort of DJing in the shopping centre, he came, <laughs> he came, Sometimes, right? I was there. I was there, and obviously, DJ I did. I did, I did my like fat boy slim. I, I did my playlist thing again. Without some the slim, some fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too hard that laugh, Ethan. <laughs> some fucking came over to me who worked there, going, "Your job's easy." I thought, "Say yeah, stop fucking paying me to do it." Passion play really? on a playlist. Um, so you got to give it to you. So, so what, I, what I'd do is every hour of the eight hours, I'd really go for it because it'd keep you alive and alert. Mm. So I'd get the fucking tunes on, I'd get going. I just thought, right, I've got to give it to it now. And then after an hour, I'd go, ah, shuffle. That's what I did. So that for what for the first hour, they get a good show, and after that, it's no, just... No, every other hour. Every other First, hour. third, fifth, seventh. And then the if last you came hour, in the, the second, is just the fourth, the it? sixth, the eighth, you just heard a playlist. <laughs> Fuck them. Anyway, no one's asked. Anyway. Heart FM. Heart. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them, you said. Yeah, we don't say the name of this shop. Fuck them. Anyway, Sorry. we. Uh, <coughs> sandwich, sandwich. Sell sandwiches. Uh, they came to me and they said, him and his dad watch Sloppy Joe's. Him and his. Him. And his dad, he's called Josh, yeah. watch Sloppy Joe's at like two or three in the morning when they arrive at the sandwich shop, they get they get all the ingredients prepared, two till like seven AM. So they put Sloppy Joe's on the telly, they watch, so and they they just love it so much. Did you know that they watched us before no, you went no. there? So wow. as a little thank you for it, he came over, Ethan, with this big bag of sweets. Like I'm talking brownies, oh. flapjacks, biscoff cheese. You got them. Presumably Rocky they're roll. for all of us, are they? Where are they? What, sorry? You ate them all. You actually you said you bastard. So they anyway, gave you. So what was just you a big, massive bag of sweets. So thank you very much, Sandwich Sandwich. Where are they? What else have you been up to this week, Joe? No, 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 no. You go there oh. and you've just taken it upon yourself to be the, the, the receiver of gifts. Where are those treats for, that are presumably for all of Some us? Some of them are in Daryl. Who's Daryl? Irish Daryl. Oh, yeah. Some it. of them are inside Lennon. Probably come out by Stop now. Stop saying inside. Some like of them are in. Because well, well, you know what you're doing. We cut them all up. We had them, and I should have brought them here, shouldn't I? Really? Yeah, because two-thirds of the people that they were for didn't get a fucking sniff of them. And one third ate the whole fucking <laughs> lot by the sound of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you a Twix or something at lunchtime. A Twix? Yeah, oh, Twix. It was the and Twix made by Sandwich it. Sandwich. Sorry, thank you, Sandwich Sandwich. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to say thank you. Thank you for the gesture, but I can't comment on the quality if, well, of we'll go to Brist I had to go to Bristol for that. Yeah, you got paid to play an eight-hour playlist. You got paid to listen to music in a shopping centre for eight hours. A lot of Rita Ora. Shit, that's so shit. Yeah. Some good tunes as well. Sorry, Ethan. I got some uh, free Kit Kats in the way in. Isn't that nice? Oh, someone Who because buy? of Sloppy Joe's? Kit, Kit Kat are doing a big stunt outside. 
giving away outside a Outside our office? Like, just, 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 <laughs> literally, like, just round the corner. Where are they, then? Have you got them for us? Oh, we can share a few of the Kit Kat bites. Oh, amazing, lovely. You don't, you don't get any. That's just nine out of ten. Uh, what else have we been up to? Right, uh, whilst I was in the shopping centre, I saw one of these bad boys. Oh. For the audio listeners, this is a World Cup sticker book. Oh, now, I'm a bit, a I used to do this as a kid a lot, collect the sticker books, but I felt like I've been a bit too old for it now. But I thought, what about if we had a little Sloppy Joe sticker book mm -hmm. that we try and compete maybe by the end of the World Cup? So Will we all have one each. Are we completed between? No, us? we got completed between us. Ethan, do you want to come around here and open the pack? Oh, we'll, I'd love we'll to. We'll only do one pack. pack. We'll do the rest of it later on. Open them. I'm just looking for some. I'm just googling something here. We're googling what? For the audio listeners, I've got mm. the book here. As you can hear. Have you ever seen uh, these? These um, there's these articles about how much it actually costs to complete one of these oh, sticker books. it's hundreds, it's hundreds. It's literally like 400 quid. So you quid. can collect the stick, go over there and open them, see what we all get. So we'll, my, we'll my, stick them on afterwards. My last, um, my last sticker book era was yeah. Euro 2004, 11 years old. Me and Gareth, me and Ashley used to go to the, uh, the, the, the little corner oh. shop on um, Rains Avenue. Wow, I've got some good ones here. Someone got a shiny Sven Goran Eriksson and the school almost melted. It was that exciting. Someone got a Louis Figo shiny. What a load of shit here, by the way. Right, well, first of all, we've opened the packet stickers there. How many are you expecting to get in a pack? Probably ten. Five. Fuck off. <laughs> Five. How many have you got? Two, three, four. Five and one's upside down. That's probably because you're holding <laughs> it upside down. Oh, yeah. Right. I got three fucking guitar players. Did you? <laughs> How do you know what instrument they do? <laughs> <laughs> I've got, who you got? Bob Dylan, Jimi Hendrix. Stop the pod, stop the pod. Best joke of the whole entire Slum Joes. <clears throat> stop the pod, right. I've got Tarek Solomon, from never guitar. Uh, Pedro uh, Miguel, sounds proper like he's from guitar. Uh, and Hassan. And then, uh, yeah. I've you, only got you, one good player. Uh, no, that's not it. Did you me. get a shiny? I, I should be a shiny, but he's not. Benjamin uh, Pavard from uh, France, but my shiny, but I'm having a shiny. I got Bruno Fernandes. Ooh, Ooh not bad. Stick them in later on. So I got, got three players I don't know. I got. Um, Where are they from? They were nice. Two Saudi Arabian, one Australian. I got Salem Al De. Sorry. Firas Al Baraken. Right. And our Mabil. He was upside down at the, at the point of opening, and I okay. don't know why. I don't know. I also got two big boys. Is he not from? Is he from Australia? That would make sense. He's from, he is from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Australia. And he's actually upside down in the back. <laughs> no way. That's hey, not fucking. Home, if you've got the a Qatar World Cup sticker book, just check if your Australian players are coming in upside down. Because yeah. ours yeah. literally did. That's a fucking great That's guy. That's stunning. Took another pack. No, no, he's got more. Yeah, yeah, I've got some more packs. Okay. So oh, here's, right. So here's a big boy. I got Sergio Busquets. Ooh. He's, been He's a bit done, the winning now. He's a bit done, but here's my shiny. You got a shiny? I got the shiny Germany badge. Ooh. That's a sick badge, that. That foil piece. The audio listeners Ooh. are very shiny. Hello, Thank everyone. Um, oh, you've not gone anywhere. You're not there. So, so for mine, I've got... Oh, they're not really great. I've got... Uh, Pieter Zielinski. Shite. Yeah, shite. Sounds a bit like the Ukrainian president, isn't it? I've got Joel King. Name-wise. You must be joking. Nice. Yeah. Um, I've also got um, Akram Hassan Afif from Qatar. Nice. Yeah. They're into these Qatar ones, aren't they? And uh, I've also got Yannick Carrasco. Can that right? Yannick Carrasco is half decent. Can I show you this pack I've just opened? That I think, in the history of <laughs> sticker books, might be the worst pack that's ever existed. Right, okay. Go on. Jared and Shakiri, washed up at best. <laughs> Remo Frula, never heard of him. Majid Hosseini, never heard of him. <laughs> Arkanadzuz Milik, uh, Milik we've heard of, but come on. Mike Mainyan, AC Milan goalkeeper, the best Jesus. player I've got. I've got two Bruno Fernandes. This is tragic, this, isn't it? Right, well, we maybe. We've got, we we got a shiny Germany. Uh, Put these stickers in for next week. And I'm going to buy a fuckload of stickers. And I want to get a shiny fucking. Right. Who's, your, who's the, the best player you had, Ethan? Do you think? Oh, I've, I've got another pocket truth. Oh, if you do. What a Pele? Is he come back out of retirement and that? 
we um, I've got a good feeling about this. Swap. I have okay. as well. I think right. you have a shine. Without even that. looking, just read them out straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a good feeling. Um, if you get if you get someone that we deem to be as good as or better than who should we say? Kevin De Bruyne. I'll Jesus. give you a tenner. That's a high bar. Well, yeah, it's a tenner. A tenner. All right. So the first one Shit. is oh, Yeltsin Ted Jeddah from. Some country I don't even recognise. Let's take a guess. Take Cost a guess the... Costa Rica? Yeah. Is that better or worse than um, Kevin De Bruyne? Just, just a little um, bit below. Yeah. yeah, I think Kevin might pip up there. Uh, ooh. Uh, Federico Valverde. Good player. But good player. Good, yeah. Very good player. Not as good as Kevin De Bruyne. Not as good as Kevin De Bruyne. Very good player, though. Um, I've got... Very football heavy, this podcast. Salio right, we'll Cisse. I just don't ask you about how much you change it. your bedding. No, it's just we don't normally talk about football in here, do we? It's nice. I give it neutral. I, I don't even realise Senegal qualified. Cool. Um, <laughs> and then, it's really oh, I've, oh, this is an interesting one. Yeah. It's a team photo of Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I say technically that is better than Kevin De Bruyne altogether. Put it together, yeah. Uh, right, Tennis so I swim to the table. Yeah, we're gonna need to fill that bad boy up before the World Cup ends. We do. Do you want to hear about burger drama first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because right. you teased this before the teased, show. Teased burger drama. You prior said there's to a the big, show. big party meltdown. Right. So in Sale, in Manchester, um, Sale is a, is a, a, a typically quite illustrious and yeah, 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 exclusive yeah. suburb of Manchester. A lot of footballers live there. Yeah. Well, Sale. It's, a, it's all right. It's quite nice. Go yeah. Come So there's a burger place um, that sparked drama Friday lunchtime. Wow. They highlighted the fact that they got two one-star reviews on one of their products uh, consecutive weeks. And they weren't too happy about it because they say they keep a very high standard. Mm. And the one-star reviews weren't the... Um, they weren't like such, so, you know, you can write a little bit about it. Mm. They were just one star reviews. Oh. And here's another reason why they weren't happy about it. Oh dear. It was by the same person. <gasps> we think so. So they're, they, they are suspecting some sort of They've done user some digging. <gasps> this is a big old status. They did some digging. Have you got the status in front of you? Yes, but it's quite wordy. Okay. Basically, they've done some digging and also spoken to one of the, their drivers in sale. Do you know, because I think in sale they'll, they'll know the same delivery drivers. I think, oh, I think it was Uber Eats. And they dropped this burger off to a rival burger place, <gasps> which they called out on the state. No! Right? So it was going off, right? Half an hour with the status being up, 150 comments. Yes. This other burger place is good, you know. I've reviewed this other one. Oh, shit. I don't want to mention names because oh. they said they're taking legal action. I suppose I can take it. Yardbird. No, Yard something. Yard Burger said that this place called Cowtown Grill in sale, who a, a Canadian uh, family who run it. Oh, they're meant been, to be friendly as well. I know. Here's the thing. Cowtown Grill came back saying this is absolute nonsense. We were in Canada. <laughs> Can't have been us. We weren't even in the country. But, but, but there was back and forth, back and forth about... This is like uh, the Rebecca Vardy thing, really, isn't it? It's really the Rebecca Vardy thing. So they, the Cowtown Grill, after an hour, uh, and, and after a lot of hate, by the way, people were like laying into them, mm. saying it couldn't be in us. We've got CCTV footage that proves it, blah, blah, blah. So then everyone was like, release the CCTV footage. Release the, release the and tapes. And they've not said anything else on it. <gasps> Later that evening, about six o'clock, I was really into it now. You know, not a lot of drama Can happens I just say, in like, my food world. Do you know, like, some people like to buy, like, Heat magazine. Some people like to go on, like, Twitter for, like, the yeah. threads, the tweets, Reddit, whatever. In And, like, I can't imagine a more perfect bit of drama for you <sighs> than it. two fighting burger shops. This could not... This is like Tyson versus Lennox it. Lewis for you, this, isn't it? I this is unbelievable. It. Uh, so I, <laughs> I was buzzing. This is your fight of the year, this isn't it? This fight of the year. So what happened now is the other guys released a statement saying... Who has? Crispy Chicken? No, Cowtown Grill saying, yeah. this has damaged our reputation. See you in court. So now it's going to the. I think it might have to go to not. The, it's not going to go to the like no, big dogs, is it? To the top, the small crown court. courts, the small court magistrates. So I'll tell you as it goes wow. on. I'll be like, you know, when there's an investigation going on, I'll let you know how it goes. Wow. Oh, Jeremy Kyle in it, lie detector. That would have been a good lie detector. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine. Did it. you order a burger? The thing is, do you have to have ordered a burger to leave a review? Yeah. 
Because it's like in-app. In because basically they say, how was your food? Do you want to review, review your, your uh, food? And then you can even review certain items. So that's what's so happened. Th 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 oh, my God. So what do you think's happened here? I think... Someone that's relatively Speculating impartial. this... Hungry. Um, no, they're from Canada. The, <laughs> that I think that possibly if they have done it, nice. they've gone away to Canada knowing that maybe they can't be, the fingers can't be pointed on. Backlash. Them. Allegedly. It's alleged stuff. So I'm ready to see how it plays out. I can't wait for this. This I is incredible. And that did get me hungry, though. So should we move on to the 9 out of 10 club? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, 9 out of 10 club is because I used to do reviews where I had to basically say everything was fucking great. Sorry, do I keep making Didn't noise? Didn't you tell it? me you did a review the other day that wasn't very good? What? I reviewed you just something. Said it, you just said it was like, come down and try it if you can. Yeah, the massive cock. Yeah. I said it was good. I said... I'm sorry. It's called the Massive Cock Burger. Oh, yeah. And I said it was good, but it's kind of like one of those man versus food challenges. Right. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be fucking... It's not like take your nan star. down. No, 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 no. You don't want to take your nan from a, nan from a massive <laughs> cock. Even your nan. With them ankles. She's already got Might one. make her better. Uh, oh. <laughs> if those was missed last week's episode, Ethan's nan's got bad ankles. Yeah. Nothing to do with the Anyway, burgers. no, I said the Massive Cock's knife, but yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not going yeah, yeah. to take you for it. I'm a Massive Cock, unless you want to. Nah, I've got one myself, boy. <laughs> Under the bed. <laughs> not here. Jesus Christ. Uh, right, 9 out of 10 club, is the, it, we bring just food to the table. That is the best of the best. And Ethan James, it's your turn this week. What's the best food you've got for us? Um, hello everyone. Yes, it's my 9 out of 10 club again. I know everyone's most excited for mine when it comes around. Um, obviously, the last time with a bacon sandwich, one of the difficulties I found was you can have a variation of this product. With the bacon sandwich, I went for, mm. for a bit of ketchup. You were suggesting maybe a bit of sausage in there. Might have made things a little bit better yeah. and it might have got in. So this time I've picked something else that has a bit of a variation, something a bit sweeter. Yeah. Okay, I like. Yeah, we've not something sweet for a while. No. Yeah. Mm, I was supposed to be at that grenade bar last week by Stephen. Yeah, I, was I told bad. you he doesn't like food. No. He brought in Cheerios. And he, and he said, what I've brought to the 9 out of 10 club is your favourite cereal, whatever that may be. Anyway, Ethan, back to you. Thanks, something Drew. sweet. So I'll go get it now, just out of the bag. For the uh, listeners at home, Ethan's currently just getting something out of a bag. And uh, here it is. <laughs> Krispy Kreme donut. Oh, oh Krispy Kreme okay. donut. Listen, this is big boy stuff, Ethan. Oh. Interesting. Well, I've got to deliver. Yeah, well, well, deliver it to us now. So, oh, yep. do you love Krispy Kremes? Oh, um, I do love a Krispy Kreme. I rarely have it though. It's a bit of a treat. But when it does come round, you get a bit excited, don't you? Mm. Oh, I've got a Krispy Kreme donut. Better than saying I've got a Greg's donut or one from Morrison's. Krispy Kreme donut, it's a whole level, different yeah, level yeah, of excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm excited because I don't think I've had a Krispy Kreme in a very I've long time. Years. I'll tell you what, we'll go well with this little top of a coffee. Are you going to go over on top of a coffee? Yeah, I'll get a top I of a coffee. About those. Right, Ethan. Now, let me just explain to the audio listeners, if you could, what they actually are, because they're not filled, are they? Come here, come over here. Oh, okay. These aren't the filled ones. These have got a hole in it. What do they do with the hole? What do they do with the hole, Drew? Well, there's many different uh, myths and reasons for the hole. Some people believe it's to save more donut dough. So they put a hole in it and you can make a few more donuts from yeah. it as well. So it just like saves material. All right, material! <laughs> <laughs> it's just doing that. It's a money making scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe you can put your finger through it. Would you shag it? Oh, I was going to make that joke to you. <laughs> it might be a bit sticky which, in that. <laughs> which one would you like? Um, these are look, these look good, you know. Well, Joe Smith has um, arrived back. They, oh, they do look good. Right. Oh my God. They look. There you go, Joe. Right. I'm gonna take a bite. I need to. I need to tell you something about this. Actually. Now. Man, this is gonna be so tricky. This, you know. Right. I've just taken a bite. You go first, Joe. Talk they are good, aren't they? Don't give a review. Yeah. They never let you down. No. Krispy Kreme donuts, always the same. 
It's sort of really. I remember growing up when I was like in year eleven. So it was what t- ten years ago. They've just taken over, haven't they? they took over massively. Um, donuts are just still kind of taking over as well. I like the icing. I like the simplicity of it. Yeah. And I like that you never sort of let down by a donut like this. Because mm. you can be let down by other big ones. Yeah. Do you know the more like posher ones you go, ah. Yeah, well, you get, you get them and it's like, what flavour is it? It's called like, like souvenir dream slice. Mm. And you're like, what flavour even is that? It's got crystals on it. Um, what are you going to say? Typically, I don't like desserts. That's sort of quite well known. I'm not a dessert boy. I don't really like sweet food. I don't really love chocolate. I don't like cake. I don't really love much like that. Now, you weren't to know this, Ethan, but growing up, my, for those who don't know, my mum's American, and we used to go over to America to see my mum's family and all that, and Krispy Kreme wasn't in England. It was, you could only get it in America at this point. This mm. is sort of 20 years ago or so. And what we used to do as a treat, we'd go to the Krispy Kreme place and you could see them making these, and you could see them coming around on the conveyor belt through the sort of curtain of glaze into, and you could get a, a, a glazed one like this, hot, still hot from the presses. And it was one of the great treats of my young life, mm. this. So the fact that you've gone with the glazed over all the more decadent, extravagant ones is quite a, a, a turn of fate, really, because most people would go for a chocolate, yeah, a yeah. custard or whatever, but this is by far my favorite Krispy Kreme donut. Simple, isn't it? And the only one that I could even consider putting into the nanotech <coughs> for me. And I think because of the nostalgia attached to it, because of the memories I have with this, the the just the glazed Krispy Kreme ring for me goes into the 9 out of 10 club. And it is so rare you'll get me to say that about a dessert, Ethan. Yeah. I, honestly, and I actually thank you because I haven't had one of these in probably 15 years. And it really is bringing back memories of my childhood being in Florida. This is the most late at night. emotional line out of ten club I think we've ever had. I it's feel a bit touched, is. Drew. Yeah. That's really that's really touched me. That. Thank you. You're welcome, I'm Drew. About. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that emotional because before Josh Smith returned, me and you were questioning if we could fuck one of them. Oh dear. <laughs> we didn't, and it was that one. <laughs> <laughs> not my childhood. No, we never f- fuck with each other. Don't um, fuck with <laughs> Joe. Please. Um, you know what? Oh. <laughs> I think there's a lot of love in the room today. There is. And I, I had that, and it left me with a smile on my face. Mm. Mm. So, Ethan James, I will be also putting it into the night. Oh. Yes, well done, Ethan. Oh. Well, Ethan James. It's been a while for Ethan as well, yeah, hasn't it? Has it has been a long, long time. Not since the steak bake, I think, Ethan's got no. something in the 9 out of 10 club. Honestly, if you'd gone for any other one, not only would I not give it 9 out of 10, I don't even like them. Mm. But the glazed donut from Krispy Kreme, oh, it's just yeah. joyful. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely joyful. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Ethan. You're welcome, Trim. Um, wow, well really done, congratulations. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Right, now we can move on to something we've not done in a while, but we've got a flurry of them, so we might as well get stuck in. It's time for the return of Agony Bants. Agony Bants. Agony Bants. Agony Bants. Agony Bants. They're creepy and they're spooky. They're cheesy and they're goopy. They you know the email us is? quite weekly. It's Agony Bants. Agony Bants. Sloppy Joe's podcast at gmail.com. If you've got anything you want to talk to us about, we'll solve your issues. Or if you just want to send us in a story, etc., with anything we've been talking about, get in the emails. Can I stop you there before you get to the proper ones? Yeah. Um, w- we did get one email, and this is the entirety. No, not like you can see how little there is on there. All it says is, my daughter has duct allergy and atopic eczema. So that's from Mark. Cheers for that, Mark. <laughs> A duct allergy? I think he meant dust. Oh, like the, the subject says dust allergy. <laughs> the body of the email says duct allergy. So, cheers for that, Mark. Not Unless, really much we can do with that, yeah, but yeah. hope you don't... Uh, you know. duct tape. I hope not. I hope, <laughs> she I never used duct tape in her life. Mm, hopefully not. Anyway. <laughs> so, cheers for that, Mark. But not not really this sort of... There was no real question to it. There was no, no kind of back no, and no, forth. No, no, I kind of like them. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think some of them maybe emails are my funniest. <laughs> There was, there was a couple about someone's TV being racist. We'll skip over that one. Then there was something <laughs> that caught my eye. Oh, dear. Make sure you check out the Sloppy Joe's Patreon, where the top sloppers unite to get all of the best Sloppy Joe's content. What extras do you get? 
Great question. Extra podcasts, live podcasts, behind the scenes videos. You also get early access to all of our podcasts and the very special Sloppy Joe's feature where Joe McGrath tells you about times that he has pooed himself. There's only one way to describe it. He shits himself all the time. If you want to be the ultimate slopper, check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Sloppy Joe's podcast. As you can see there, the link is in the description for all of that extra stuff. The slop mamas, the slop daddies, the slop goblins. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Slop Shop. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Sloppy Joe's podcast for the ultimate sloppy experience. It's, it's email title is anal virgin with a question mark. Oh, okay, God. this is a my fucking- My in-laws watch this sometimes. Yeah, this is a roller coaster. My mum oh. might not be coming- Fucking <laughs> <laughs> roller coaster, right? Mm. My mum might not be coming to the live show because she's worried it might be too rude. Yeah. We won't keep it that rude. Ange, anal virgin. So this is a question to us. And this is what we do here on Agony Bounce. We ask, answer questions. We'll go deep. We'll go into it. We will stick our fingers of fortune into any query that you may have. Right. Evening, Joes and Ethan. A few years ago, I hurt my back badly and one of the discs popped forward and tweaked my bladder. Ooh. But there was only a side... Oh, no. That's only a side note. Whilst visiting the hospital for the above injury, I required a rectal... <laughs> A rectal examination. A nurse, Teresa, we'll call her, asked me to drop my shorts and enter the fetal position. What is that fetal position, Ethan? If you um, know, if anyone doesn't know. It's, uh, I don't really know. Like, your head's down and your bum's up kind of thing. Like nice. That, I think. Head uh, down, ass up? I think so. No, 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 no. That's the way we like to fuck. That's not fetal oh, position. No, it is, it is. <laughs> Knees I, tucked up to chest. Because I, I just saw that advert on YouTube that was what like, if you, if you do this, you'll sleep like a baby. And the man's like got can his you head just, against the bed and his Can you cut up. to the wide, please, and come and show us what you think the fetal position is? Yeah, great. Well, yeah. come on. Come on, on the table. Um, I'll expl uh, explain graphically for the audio listeners. Yeah. So we, this is what Ethan thinks the fetal position is. Do it on there. No, just do it on the bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hell out on it. No, no, it's fine. Right. Here's the trailer. Second side half. Jesus. That, if we can just get a screenshot, is exactly the position that Sid from Toy Story sleeps in. <laughs> when he gets into bed, just yeah. like that. That is not the fetal position. What is the fetal position? Fetal position is like curled up, it's like a curled fetus. Up. Okay, well, well, well. Not like arms behind you. That's the position you go in when, you know, <coughs> someone's getting home late from work and you want to surprise them. <laughs> that would be, especially if, you, especially if you've never seen them before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're in their house. So you met your girlfriend, of course, <laughs> 10 months earlier. Uh, I did this, so I got into the fetal position with much protest, as I didn't want no man, woman, or beast going anywhere near there. Certainly not a beast. She assured me that she was a bum-fingering professional, and I'd done it a thousand times. Anyway, whilst fing fingering me... Oh, God. So she, her, I don't the, like... The the nurse, all right, whilst, what can we say instead of fingering? Whilst conducting the procedure. Yeah. She asked me to grip her finger. <laughs> and I frantically moved a hand above my head. She asked what I was doing as I was looking like I was some sort of loon. And I said I was trying to grip her finger. <laughs> she, were, she then told me that she meant the one in his bum <laughs> and not... What, grip it. Oh, grip like, it. The suggestion being that up until now it was just some slack, loose, like <laughs> wizard sleeve that she was putting a finger oh. into. Yeah. What do you mean grip it? Surely he was already gripping it. Sure. Yeah, but you got to try. You got to check. Could you grip it now? Try and I grip think, it. I think I there's a finger in your bum now. Try and grip it. Hoink! Snapped it. Ethan, try and grip it. Um. Yep. Just tried. <laughs> Right, so anyway, th that was that was the worst of the bum fingering thing. God. She then, uh, after finished violating me, paused mm. and passed me a tissue to clean myself up. I checked my penis and informed her I hadn't came. <laughs> what is this email? Oh, and she laughed and said it was just lube around my uh, ring. Anyway, here's Have the question. No, no, I've not written this. Here's the questions that How he asked me. Agony Vance. There's two, two questions. The second one's so funny. The first question is, does this count as an anal? Does this count as anal or am I still an anal virgin? 
The second question is, do you like a finger up the board? <laughs> right. So to answer the first question... Yes to both. Uh, obviously not. Obviously that doesn't count. Because, Why? Because it's, not, it's non-sexual. It's like saying, I've done a shit, have I lost my anal virginity? Yeah, no, of course not. shit doesn't go back in. Huh? Unless you've been frightened. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, I don't know. I think he might have done... No. So what it so you're telling me I think it has to be like in this in the moment, doesn't it? What? So like it has I think to be it, I think there's, there's the physical this is side medical. of things. The physical side of things is If you had a, if you had a, if you had a someone had to check like kit like uh, right, I need to be very careful. No, you need to be this. very careful. What so I to... I've got friends growing up who like and it's quite common this actually, so it's good to raise awareness. The old okay. type foreskin problem. It's very common. Oh, isn't it? Ethan. Uh, yep. His is gone. It's gone now, but that was the problem, no yeah, longer. Exactly. So exactly that. So you wouldn't have considered your first hand job being the doctor checking what the issue was, would you? Yeah, but you didn't uh, definitely him not. off. No, <laughs> no, I wouldn't count that as a hand job. Exactly. It's good for Moses, by the way, if you're interested. Do you know what I mean? So Google it's it if you're having problems, and it's very it common, just get it sorted. But that wouldn't be like, my first hand job, I was only four. It's not. It's okay. a medical procedure. Okay, yeah, of course agree. not. Yeah, yeah. What do you Ethan, think? do you think he's lost his own virginity? Um, no, I've, I've got to agree with uh, Joe's logic, which is a, a rarity today, agreeing on two things. Um, but no, I've, 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 no, I don't think it is. And also, I've just had a thought. What I was doing there definitely isn't the fetal position. I don't know why I thought it was. <laughs> but I've just thought about it, and it's not. That's sleeping like a baby, not the fetal position. Yeah, so that's good, that. You don't right. sleep in a womb like that, do you? That would yeah, be mental. No. Second question is, do you like a finger up the bum, Ethan James? Um, no, I, you see, I still have difficulties when I go to the bathroom and it can be quite sore and... Oh, the bleeding arse. Yeah, so Ethan's it's not... Ethan's weeping that could anus. That could ruin the mood, and, 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 yeah, like, you know, like, hygiene and that as well. <laughs> you know clean. you like to wash it, don't you? How extensively can you wash it? Because you can't really... Well, you know the um, the toilet brushes. That's it. That's that's not for the toilet. That's to is it's an alternative to toilet paper. In, just in, put it in the crack and just do that with it, like you're trying to start a fire. Just fly. It's just shit. Just flies everywhere. But it gets a really good clean. In India, they have sprinklers that do that. Mm. There's sprinklers in the toilet. There's I, I think I think they just spray up like your a bum. bidet. What's a bidet? A bidet. A bidet. A birthday. A oh, a bidet. I don't know what that is. Have you yeah. never heard of a bidet? Oh, it's like the thing that you sit in and you wash your bum in. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I, don't, oh, I don't know now. I'm confused. It might be so one of them. it has a sprinkler. I, I always imagined it was in the toilet. I might be making this the up. Ones, some, some bidets are in the toilet. There's like a little arm with a jet of water that sprays it. Uh, yeah. Your tushy. They have them quite... They had a lot of them in Singapore. What stops you from pooing on the arm? The arm retracts. Or it fires well, from the got, side. It's got feelings. It what? fires from the side. It fires from the side. Yeah, you're, you're doing a central drop off, aren't you? Are you too tall? That, well, that's like you saying, what stops you from shitting on the toilet seat? You don't aim for it, you, you just shit around yeah, but it. But how is this thing firing at your ass, right. but not in any sort of range to be landed on? But, so let's imagine this is the toilet seat like this. Your poo is going down the middle like that. Yeah. This is firing like that from the side. Jesus, takes you by surprise then. It does. It's really quite. But emotional. I think that's one thing us Europeans are quite. Behind on in terms of like yeah, toilet. Can, like I, can I, can I, can I um, offer? Can I offer a, a suggestion as to why that might be? Yes. So why I know Europeans for certain do... why Europeans are less are behind on the B day game. Even though B day sounds well, like it must Europeans be a French are word. Head on the B day game. No, on the jet finger one, like the one where it fires it at you, the electric one, not the sort of that can weird we, little say, bath next to the toilet. We can talk. We've not got any sort of bidet. That's what I'm saying. We're yeah, same. That's literally what I'm saying. We're, oh, we're, we're, we're behind. Well. Not if he, when he even got his way, we weren't. No, that's true, yeah. 52% and all that. Um, but here's my... Let me proffer this. This is just based on my... When I went to Singapore, on the way there, we stopped off at uh, Bali, I think it was. And they had a B-Day in the airport. Yeah. The thing I noticed immediately, because it's just such a much hotter country, the, the water that just came naturally through the pipes was warm, yeah. which is immediately quite nice on the tush. But imagine cold British tap water <laughs> on your arsehole. You just have to get, get on with it. Have you, ever, have you ever used a jug? Have you ever been to a Muslim country and used a jug? No. That's an experience. Is it? 
shit in a hole and just sort of there's a little jug mm. and a, a, a tap and you fill up the tap. How does that work gravity wise? You just got to throw it up there. Really? Throw it you up there. You have to there. chuck it up. Like with your wrist. You have to have strong wrists. Can I get on the table again? Mm. <laughs> it's, it can hold an Ethan. I don't know if it can hold two Ethans. I want an half. Or a bit. Basically. Or a baby elephant. <gasps> Fucking baby elephant. Dumbo, he calls you. <laughs> Fuck off. You Could a baby <laughs> elephant eat four takeaways in six hours? <laughs> I don't think so. I had three. The other way you had four. I didn't eat, eat them all. Just fine. Show us this thing. It's like tapas. Yeah, nibble. the way you do it. Little nibbles. Crouch down like this. Mm. All your listeners sort of crouched and you sort of shit in a the hole. There's no toilet. That's all right. All right. What's it? What's you, it? Don't it was. you need to knock it. So I'm crouched down now and then tap in the corner. It's cold water, but like I said, it's kind of warm. Mm. And you just go, fucking hell, have that. <laughs> and you sort of fucking... Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's what you do. Very good. Right, team. It's time for... It's 5 all, by the way, mm. in Joe versus Joe. Du, 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 du. We didn't do it last week because Stephen was a special guest. We'll bring it back this week. Someone will take the lead mm. and be a step closer to sending the other person to a McDonald's for 24 hours. Yeah. Ethan James, Quizmaster. Hello there, Joe. Um, welcome to another episode of Joe versus Joe. Um... And uh, this week, the topic is famous Joes. Love it. Nice. Love it. I can get answers ready. This. Let's kick it off then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. A little dramatic pause, a little bit. Uh, question one. Uh, which Joe won the X Factor in 2009? You go first. I don't know how to spell it. It's all right, Just don't worry about You're spelling. You're Googling it! No, I'm not. Are you what? No, I'm not. Just like Google that. It's fucking notes. Go then, what have you said? Joe McKeldry. Yes, I've got Joe McKeldry as well. That's so in his wheelhouse, that. Sang It's the Climb by Marley Cyrus. It's the Climb! It is Joe McKeldry. Rage Against the Machine, that was the first year. Oh, uh, was it? Yeah, that's how I... Yeah. yeah. Next one. Question okay, two. Yeah. Who presented Fear Factor? Coming to go first? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan I've got as well. It is Joe Rogan. Good nice. start from you two. This is good, this. Good. This is good. Famous Joe's. Joe Rogan, of course. Question three. Which Joe has the most Premier League appearances? He comes 53rd on the record list. Hmm. Got an answer. It's quite a oh. difficult one. Can we push him here or what? No, no. Of course, you don't get unlimited time for it. You got 10 seconds, Drew. 10? He's already had 10. Is it Joe play? as in J-O-E? No, don't, don't he's just Five him. seconds, Joe. Joe. Yes, as Four, in Joe. Doesn't matter, three, just Joe. Two, one, so one. Joe Cole. I've got Joe Cole as well. The answer is Joe Cole. Well done. I was going to go Joe from Lee and Lesko. <laughs> Well, where would Joe Leon Lescott be? Because he's never ever seen this. Yeah, but his name is Julian. It's oh, not I thought we were going to get a I thought it was a trick question. Joe Leon. All right. Next question. Three all. Who is Jesus' father? Do you need his second name? No. Unbelievable. Well, what are you put for here? Oh, All right. He's got a nickname. I'll just put Joseph. Joseph the Carpenter. Well, that's... Oh, it's a trick question. The answer is God. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. He is right, bless him. He's done us. He's fucking done us. He said Same it was that. famous Joe's, yeah. but it wasn't. That's a very good one, that. It is God. God is called God. Joe. Jesus. Yeah. It's John Lennon over it. Unlucky. Okay, uh, next question. What Joe played Tommy DeVito in the 1990 film... The good fellas. I hope you've got a fucking tiebreaker, lad. I need I'm, Joe I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your answers, please? Well, Joe Pesci. Yeah, Joe Pesci. It is Joe Pesci. Yes. Yes. What's four, the tiebreaker? Four out of five. Oh. I'm All right. Uh, uh, 
God. I'm a bit worried because I've just got another Joe question for the tie break. I might have to find something in between if, if you Is get this right. Is it hard, this one? I don't know. Go on, just say it. It's probably not that hard. Uh, which Joe won the 2008 I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here? I've gone Joe Swash. I've gone Joe Swash. Ah, it is Joe Swash. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Right, so I've had a little look for a decider. And the deciding question is, how old is Joe Pasquale? Oh, it's a great question. No writing down. Why? Because we can Google it. Who's going first? You go first. You go first. 62. Oh, that's good. You've got to write, you can't think. Uh, I'm going to go with what I was going to go with anyway. Promise. 58. We've got a winner. One of you is a year out. Right? Oh my god. And the answer is 61. So Joe McGrath takes it again on a sudden death. The comeback of comebacks. Uh, I was down 5 2. Oh, he's won four oh, in a row. I'm only one away from having to spend fucking 24 hours in a McDonald's with Ethan. Ladies and gentlemen, let's well wrap done. these up with well a couple done, of Joe. Ask Ethan's, shall we? Ooh. Ask Ethan. And this is one for us all. I think we can all take a minute to think. Mm. Have we got any goals that we want to complete by the end of 2022? <laughs> it's November who time are you? now. Why are you some of, someone I went to school with on Instagram? It's November time Goals now. for the year. We I could, want to we, rename no, my No, because I thought we could maybe say some goals and we can all try and help each other complete them. Okay. Goals for the end of 2022. Ethan James. Um, well, I've got my driving test at the end of November. So they, that. they would, cheated and they, they scammed the system into being able to do. What's your goal with that? I would like to pass it. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah, um, and then maybe we can get a sponsor for the show again. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's the same as him. Mine's the same as him. What's yours? Uh, <coughs> sponsor for the oh, show, gosh. for fuck's sake. Uh, Cash. Yeah, that, that, and lose a bit of weight before the live show, so we've got five weeks. What, are you gonna, what do you think you can lose in five weeks? Uh... Maybe a little bit of the double chin. Yeah, pounds wise. Oh, don't know. Just a bit. We're doing no carb November. Oh yeah? Yeah. Who's we? Me and Becky. <clears throat> are you not yeah. doing any food reviews in November? I've got one booked in. So what are you gonna do? Just tomato soup? No, she give me an exemption for that. Oh right, so carb November you're calling I, it then? No. Oh. No carb November, apart from the seventh of November. When you're having carbs. No, and I'm not even gonna drink beer in November. Really? Vodka, lime, and sodas. Oh, right, so you're still drinking alcohol. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. I've got Just one. fucking leave me alone. I've got one. No, but... I'll right, tell you what. No, no, no comment on my weight in November. Why don't you do that? Every single episode in November, you can't say anything about my weight. All right, then, yeah, I'll do it. And then you can slag me off on the live show. Can't mention anything about Joe's weight all through November. Fair. That's fine. I'll any other goals? You got any other goals? Before the end of the year, it's only there's only six weeks to the end of the year. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Like that. It's not, it's fucking eight. You could do, I fancy doing a park run. It's mm. like a 5k without stopping. I think you could do that. Deal, that is it? I think yeah. you could do that. Um, I'd like to uh, just work out sort of the size of things a little bit. I'm, I struggle with it. What do you mean? Like, how big is a treadmill? Can I fit it in this place <laughs> or that place? How big is a fucking, you know. I, could, yeah, treadmills are quite big. Like, I've got a stack of bricks that I need to do something with. How big is it? Don't Where know. did you get them from? Found it on a builder's yard. You didn't have to take them, you know? No, I wanted it. I've got a question for everyone. Yeah. What's the worst trouble you ever got in at school? Ethan, ask Ethan. Um, oh, worst trouble. Um, I once said, I was quite a good lad at school, but I remember once we had a supply teacher in and we had a system called B marks. And if you collect three B marks, which means behavior marks, you get a detention. And I never had a detention before. And I love the fact that I never had a detention. I was scared, very scared. And then uh, one time in maths, I said, I'd made a mistake, and I went, oh, Scheiser, right, which is a, a German swear for, I think it means shit. Right? And I didn't know Cheers. this, right? Cheers for that, Ethan. Yeah, so then, so then uh, uh, the, the teacher said, right, that's a detention, and I was gutted. I was heartbroken, yeah, yeah. right? And I went, I'm really sorry, sir, I, I didn't realise I said I, what it meant. So he said, fine, then, Ethan, I'll give you a B mark. And I was already on two B marks, so I got a detention oh, anyway. Is that when you get five yellow cards, isn't it? I got you still trouble. get a suspension. I, I, exactly. I'm always in trouble, me. Always mm. in trouble. But I think the worst one was there was a lot of fights, there was a lot of kickoffs. Uh, there was a time where we thought it was funny at the time. I don't know if it's funny now, but me and, me and my mate Andy, mm. there was all these sort of, like all the, you say, like the sort of hard kids. 
and then there was a sort of like the goths. Mm. We wrote a letter. Uh, there was this like anonymous box at the front of our school. We wrote a letter pretending to be a, a little year seven saying that they tied us up to a tree <laughs> and then just listed all these goths and hard kids saying these are the people who did it. <laughs> and then there was a big assembly about bullying how it was wrong. And then they called out all the goths and all the hard kids. <laughs> I'll never forget it. We walked past them. <laughs> it was such a mis mismatch of people. <laughs> like oh, long, straight and yeah, purple yeah. hair over the yeah, arm. The and then like in. fucking Helly Hansons and yeah, Rockports. Yeah, yeah. Being told about this incident where they worked as a team. And they get, all these hard kids were fuming. But then there's someone clocked that it was because all the hard kids and goths were like, no, we definitely didn't do this. They got in a handwriting expert. Uh, to, to what is this fucking CSI yeah, Stockport? It, it was funny though. Uh, they got a handwriting expert. They kind of thought it was me and Andy at the time. We were getting bollocked for a lot of it. So we're going to prove it's you. And that's the most trouble I got, ever got in. But then they said, right, it's getting too far. So they brought in a handwriting expert to read what was my writing. And they <laughs> got someone else. To <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. This guy handwriting Rob, expert. <laughs> she slipped in 50 quid. So it's one of the goths. Oh, <laughs> He's grassed on himself, nice. Uh, um, can I, sorry, can I just interrupt and say my story was crap, uh, and I just recalled I once got accused for um, for, for mugging a lad at a bus stop <laughs> who was in year seven. <laughs> He's too scared to get a B point, but he'll fucking mug someone at a bus stop. <laughs> Jesus what Christ! Mean, kids are muggy. Oh. What's happened? What so, do you mean? So the, the, the kid claimed that me and my uh, my mate Alex, who's my next door neighbour, were just travelling home on the bus, and this we yeah <laughs> seven kids started talking to us, and then. The next day, he made up this complete fabrication of a story that my friend Alex went into his pocket and stole his bus pass and his wallet and we sent him on the wrong bus. And it was just a complete lie. None of it was true. Yeah, right. you get off. Um, well, I, I bet you was, got off, didn't you? There was, you there, sicko. Got off on his misery. There was days of, like, investigations, like, staying after buying school, like, getting took out of class, getting, like, interrogated for this. And it was all just a fucking lie. My and then I got accused for being a liar and that. And in the end, uh, the, the, I told the teachers, I said, I just, I said, listen, you've made me worry for no reason to ruin my weekend. <laughs> and and the, He's on the teacher. Yeah, I did. Can I tell another the story? Teacher told them off. Go, go on then, go well, on. No, we had, the, we had a food fight on a bus once, mm. right, where we've got all the old um, food tech stuff and we were just fucking lobbing at each other. I got a lot of raw sausage to the forehead. <laughs> Do you think that's what knocked your hair back? Okay, yeah, yeah. It's never been the same since. <laughs> it's not, is it? No, it might, be, it got might have been using Lynx Africa shower gel for a year on my hair. Yeah, maybe. I think and it's that Cumberland weave. That you mind it. With. Anyway, so the, oh, the bus driver was fuming because obviously he must mess his bus up. But he, she got us, uh, a couple of the lads who got told off for it in the assembly to watch the CCTV. What fun that was. Oh, yeah. It was fucking great. It was like watching WWE. Um, <laughs> but then she was like looking in the corner. And there was this guy, big lad, called Vitch. Um, and he was quite quiet, but for some reason, in the corner of this video, he's just got <laughs> seven in a headlock, <laughs> just punching the <laughs> No, I, I think the year seven was winding him up or somewhere. But he just Everyone else is just having a food fight, him. and he's just loving it. <laughs> and she went like that. I'd love to get oh, that video so on here. Good. One time, speaking of um, raw meat, um, our... Year seven tutor, she sort of moonlit, moonlit, what? moonlighted. She mooned you? She used to moonlight as a, uh, she was the Bernard Matthews turkey ham girl. On the, I have on no the idea what you Do you know Bernard Matthews turkey ham? Yeah. You get, you get it by the slice. Oh, yeah. She, she was the turkey ham girl. Right. As far as TV was concerned. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and one time we were playing frisbee in class. And I, and I was being cheeky. Yeah, yeah. We I cheeky. went for the behind the back frisbee technique. Nice. Right in the money maker as well. When you think about it, she's very in between us. Right, yeah. Right. Hit her in the head. I was in isolation for a week. A week? Yeah. What does she know you're playing frisbee? Yeah, you're not meant to be playing frisbee. Oh, Come on, oh, mister. Oh, you know we're playing frisbee. Get your head out of the way. Frisbee. So I hit her right in the turkey ham. Jesus. And, she, and I had to spend a week in isolation. A week. Bad that. That's why we used to do fart Fridays. Did you? Yeah, this is really set you off. This. I think we should save some of these. We used to just try and fart as loud as we could on a Friday at maths. Really? Yeah. 
Great it, fun. Yeah, really good fun. Um, if you haven't checked out, myself. if you haven't checked out already, make sure you check out our Patreon. We are doing an exclusive live it's stream. Already. It's already been done, but you can check out the footage over on our uh, Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Sloppy Joe's Pod or Podcast. Podcast. Uh, podcast. Uh, why don't you get in your naughty school stories? When was the time you most got in trouble? Let's yeah. do a little thing on that. When's the time you most got in trouble at school? There's all sorts of other exclusives. We've got the uh, Come Down come with, down with me. me. We've got mm. early tickets for the live nine show. You get extra review. podcast down at 10 Club Review. There's so much good stuff on the Patreon. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. Patrons will be told about the after party as well of the uh, live show. We yeah. secured the venue. Uh, it's going to be great crack. Yes, it is. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Wave, Ethan. Bye.